Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we're going to be going over a few more orange teal tips because people keep asking for them, so I guess I'll keep giving them to you. So here I've got this footage, it was already shot at sunset on a lake, so it's basically already orange teal. We can just crank this guy up some and, you know, drop that guy over there, we're pretty much there. If that's all you're wanting, that's fine. I think that actually looks pretty cool on accident. But if you want to like really make it go poppy explosion, make people think that you're just the boldest colorist out there, here are some things we can do. The first thing is I'll notice that these blues look great. I like them how they are. But if you want them to make them look like a bad movie or something, go over to your Q versus Hue curve. And you can either select them locally. I normally just take my blues and my cyans. And then you can move them up a little bit and see how James Bondy that looks and just sort of action movie. So you can see before and after. It makes it look, you know, like a film. So that's one little trick. And the other one is accentuating stuff with secondaries. So you'll see this a lot with people selecting skin tones and making them stand out. But since these people's skin tones aren't really going to do much for us, what we're going to do is we're going to make the orange over here in the sunset look a little more orangey. So you saw it before, we can just, you know, make it orange with there. That looks pretty cool. That looks fine. But we're going to make it more bold or more bolder. So I'm going to add a little secondary here. By little, I mean big, gigantic, gross qualifier. And get that way out. And now we'll apply our little gain thing right to here. And I'll go there. I'll add a little bit of gamma too and really push it. We will brighten it up a little bit since it's a sunset. And now we have this big, nice gradation. So that's looking fine there. Another thing you can do is I will pull this one back a little bit. And then you can add a parallel node and make it even more of a gradient. So you're sort of adding a little bit more interest there. So it's not just the same sort of linear gradient throughout the whole thing. And that sort of just gives it a little bit more punch. It makes it look a little bit less like a filter on the front of the lens and more like an actual thing, which is nice. So we got that looking pretty good. You know, I think we're there. If you want to go even more poppy, we could make this a little bit more bluey. I'm not really sure if I want to do that. So since I'm not sure, we'll try it out anyway. I'll add another serial node. And for this one, yeah, I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of blue there. You can see that's really muddying up our subject. So then we'll add an outside node. And what this will let us do is whenever we cut something out of this node, like if we add a circle window, you can see that it is only the opposite applies to this node, which is really nice. So I'm going to invert this window and sort of, you know, make it do its thing. Looking good. And then I'll make this go towards blue. So that's looking pretty good. I think I will it more like that sort of vibe. Then in here, I'll just brighten this up a bit since we have that latitude. Even though this is DSLR footage, you can see we're able to really do a good little bit to this image. So you might want to soften this guy out a little more if we can. It's pretty nice. And in here, we can try even warming it up a bit. That might be a bit much. Just a little bit seems pretty nice, just to let it pop out a little more. And then finally, the last thing we can do is just add a little linear qualifier at the top and contrast up our sky, make it look like top gear. So just bring our gamma down, lift down, saturation up, just sort of fake some dynamic range in there. Since that's sort of bringing the whole overall brightness of the image down, can not I can add another serial node and bring our gamma up some. And normally if you do this, you can even get away with increasing saturation a bit more, which is nice. So yeah, I think that's looking pretty decent. Uh, another quick thing we could do is over in this little highlight part, we can go to our open effects, drag a glow on there. Glow is like my favorite effect. And bring the threshold down. There we go make our color, you know, warm, not as saturated. And that just gives us a little bit more glowy look there, which is pretty nice. I am all about that. We could even just disable it here. Try adding it to this bigger one. 
because I really like, oh yeah, I really like glow a lot. Just warm it up a little bit. Threshold down. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So you can see before and after, that's going to bring a lot more interest to your, you know, sailing YouTube channel or whatever. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. If you're one of those people that has a sailing YouTube channel, let me know because I'm totally addicted to those like sailing vloggy things, guilty pleasure. Not even a guilty pleasure. Just, just, you know, another one of those things. Be sure to check out meesnewmedia.com slash products for the house LUTs pack, the bright lights light leak pack, which would be great on this footage also. That would make it look super hip. Also, be sure to check out the Carnival Power Grades, which are just oodles and oodles of fun. 100 Power Grades using the new Resolve FX, the only Power Grades pack out now, at least to my knowledge, that uses Resolve FX. So if you want to get in diving deep into those, that's a fun little thing. Once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.